I read a statistic that communities in Chicago, Streeterville and Inglewood, nine miles apart, but they have a 30 year difference in life expectancy. What is that about? Unfortunately, there's a lot of research that shows that someone's zip code can be more important than their genetic code. Health equity, I mean, it's, it's like, okay, what are you saying? There's no equity in health. It's the haves and the haves nots. Inglewood, 60 years. Streeterville, 90 years. And that shouldn't be the case. Whether you live in the Gold Coast or the South Side, you should be able to get the same access to care. For most cancers, almost all cancers, African Americans have higher rates of mortality compared to other groups. ACS has always given researchers like me that conduct cancer disparities research and health disparities research a place where we can not just address the immediate cancer disparity, but also address those social determinants that can impact that patient's cancer outcome. when you can't walk out your door and go have a store that you could get fresh produce. When you can't walk out your door and you have a, a health issue and the hospitals in your area are closing. It's a sad thing, really, because a lot of our people need health care and they can't get it. These are things some people just take for granted. I mean, it's nothing, they don't have to think about it. We just, it's just behind the eight ball all the time. That's how you feel, <laughs> that's how you feel. The stress that you can be under just by being black in America is also one of those determinants of health that we don't often talk about. Many times we use terms like social determinants of health, and sometimes what we really need to say is racism. Systemic racism and structural racism actually does need to be addressed when we think about cancer prevention and cancer control. The American Cancer Society has always been a strong partner for us to do health equity research. This is not new for ACS, nor is it a new space that they're entering into. You can't find an organization that helps all people. There's always some kind of quirk in there, but not with the American Cancer Society. They are right there in the trenches with us, letting yeah, us they know. Are, they're in the trenches. They're they are the right trenches. there with us, every step of the way. And they say everybody. They, and I feel like, in my heart, they, they mean everybody. You feel it, yeah. you sense it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's that, not something know, they just talk, they live it. Yeah. They live it. They are genuinely concerned about you. My story or my history with the American Cancer Society started with losing my mom to breast cancer about 10 years ago. They were so helpful with my mom when she was diagnosed. I was always concerned about her care, but they even helped her get rides to appointments. They had different events, and she met different women that were on the same journey as herself. They were able to form friendships, and as a matter of fact, it's one particular woman that still calls me every year at my mom's anniversary of her death because they had that conversation. Once I leave, would you please check on my kids? So she calls me every year, and uh, so that's beautiful. And then 2019, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, so it became even more personal with me. say that I have um, forged friendships with some of the people at the American Cancer Society, genuine friendships with them. They come to all of our meetings. They're there like they are part of our group. They are part of our family. ACS has always been a partner that's easy to plug into. For example, one of the first grants that I got was a grant that was funded by ACS that allowed me to address colorectal cancer screening disparities. And it was really that grant that let me know that funders were interested in narrowing those gaps in inequities. And since then, I've partnered with American Cancer Society in several other ways. Tobacco cessation research, prostate cancer screening, you name it, I've been partnering with ACS. They have so many resources. When I got diagnosed, I hopped on the internet 
on the website, you can learn about your diagnosis, you can learn about prevention, you can learn about things that you can control and things that you cannot control as far as cancer. One of the things I'm really excited about as well is ACS's commitment to community engagement. For example, I've worked with the Apostolic Church of God and spoke several times to their prostate cancer awareness group, one of which I know um, Ray is a part of. I was a very active person, just going, going, going. Doctors, I didn't figure I needed them. <laughs> one day, my wife got this premonition. She said, you got to go to the doctor, get your PSA checked. I said, what? what? She said, you got to go. So that's, I went to the doctor. He gave me the diagnosis of, that I had cancer. That's how it started. I worked with the choir. In the time, the choir would have 250, 250 members, yeah. maybe, or 300. Yeah. And I, I told him what was happening, and I'd be gone for about six weeks. When he decided to let the choir know uh, that he was challenged with this, and he was so open with it, other men felt comfortable coming to him talking about it. So what ended up happening we decided to start a prostate cancer support group here at the Apostolic Church of God. And had he not gone do this, we would not have the support group. You have to go through things in life, and the only reason you have to go through a lot of things is to help others. If I could help somebody with go through this, be worth it. You have to share what you go through. Just share it. It'll help so many people. It's just so many different things that happened within uh, the past couple years that unless you were under a rock, you know it's the time to get this moving. It's a spotlight. The light goes out and everybody goes back to normal. And that's where you get bogged down. We can't let up. We have to keep our foot on the gas. I don't want it another 50 years to go and we still talking about the same issue, an issue that can be resolved. And you know, you say, well, give up, give up. I, 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 I might as well quit. No, don't quit. <laughs> don't quit. <laughs> you have to be an advocate for yourself. You have to know you matter. You have to speak up. We got to keep fighting. This is a call to action. We want that life expectancy in Inglewood to go up to 65, 75, 85. What better looks like to me is that we won't have statistics where we say that African-American men are almost two times more likely to die from prostate cancer compared to white men. Better looks like the fact that no matter where you live, you will have access to evidence-based and cutting-edge screening and care. Better for me is when you can get care despite your zip code. I am reminded that we still have a long way to go, but we have made several advances that makes me think that better is on the horizon.